service of matins. That's on page 219 in the front of your hymnal. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The congregation may be seated. You are asked at this point to uh, turn to the order of holy baptism. That's on page 268 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you named? Hayes, Walter, Winter. Then Hayes, Walter, Winter, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, 
You preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Hayes according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of holy life and faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Hayes Walter as sponsors and as witnesses of the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. That God enable you both to will and do this faithful and loving work, and with His grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. And we answer together for Hayes. Hayes, do you renounce the devil? Yes, yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, yes I believe. And Hayes, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, yes I do. Okay. And Hayes, Walter, Winter, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the birth of water and the Spirit and forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Hayes, Walter, Winter new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. We continue then with the readings following the liturgy on page 221. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Jeremiah in the 20th chapter. O Lord, you induced me and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out. I shouted violence and plunder. Because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones, I was weary of holding it back and I could not. For I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my acquaintances watched for my stumbling, saying, perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty awesome one. Therefore, many persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous and see the mind and heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have pleaded my cause before you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of evildoers. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle reading comes from Romans in the sixth chapter. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then, shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew in the 10th chapter. 
These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. There is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
Grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text this morning is from the Gospel reading, verses 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. There ends the text. Your fellow redeemed, fear destroys lives, ruins peace. And fear seems to be growing in the world today, too. People are more and more afraid these days of just a variety of things. They're, they're afraid of our government and the direction the country seems to be going. They're afraid of other people, how others might react to them if they speak out on some social issue or moral issue. Inevitably, these days, if you do take a stand for traditional morality, someone will shout you down. People are afraid of schools and what their kids are being taught. They're afraid of losing their jobs in an uncertain economy. Afraid of relationships not lasting, of getting bad grades, of running out of money, of growing older, of conflict within the family. It's an endless list of things that people fear. Afraid of life. They're afraid of death. People of the world today no longer find peace within themselves. They long for it, but they can't find it. There's so much fear in their hearts, they can't seem to ever be at peace. The wonder of Christ's incarnation is that God Almighty, who is above all the troubles of this world and above all the fears that plague humanity, chose to come into our flesh and actually live right in the middle of it all. Jesus knows what fears dominate our heart and mind. Every day of his life in this world was a day lived in total immersion in the true ugliness of humanity. Throughout his ministry, people were bringing Jesus all their worries and anxieties and problems and looking to him to solve them all. And even Jesus himself experienced the torturous anxiety of facing a horrible death. He prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane that if this cup could pass from him, that the Father would allow it. But God, the Father, needed him to bear the cup. So Jesus pressed forward. He faced his fleshly fears. He was crucified and died. So Jesus knows our fears. He lived through them. He lived with them. And he saw how those fears in the world were harming the people that God loved. So in our reading today, Jesus has taken it upon himself to address the problem of fear. In fact, he even talks about different kinds of fear. He says, you will be hated by all for my name's sake. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. There is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. The first fear he addresses is that which only we as Christians truly understand. It's the fear of what happens when we're open, public about the faith that Christ has given us. The driving mindset in the world today is one of tolerance, open-mindedness, live and let live, accept all beliefs and all gods. Our world today doesn't believe in absolute truth anymore. All truths are equal. All gods are equal in our country. But Christianity is exclusive. We, along with God's word, confess there's only one path to eternal life, and that is through Jesus Christ, true God, and true man. We make the bold confession that only Jesus and the truth that he reveals from God's word can save souls. We claim that anything that claims to be truth apart from God's word is deceptive. So despite what the world says, no, being nice is not going to save you. And no, doing enough good things to make God happy isn't going to save you. We need Jesus. We need his forgiveness. 
his mercy that covers our corruptions. And that's the whole point of the baptism, baby Hayes, that you witnessed today. Right there in baptism, Hayes was washed with the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus, which alone saves lost souls. He was made a member of a heavenly family, joined to the only salvation and the only Savior available to humanity. So from birth, he was alienated from God because of the original sin that stuck to his flesh. Now he has been found by Christ, torn away from the clutches of corruption. Hayes is one with his Savior. Without Jesus having found him, though, he would have remained separated from God. Jesus really is the only path to eternal life. Now, saying that here among people who are like-minded is easy. There's no risk in it. Saying that amongst family and friends that don't believe Jesus is the only way to eternal life, that's a little more difficult. Saying that in a public setting where there's lots of people of lots of different faiths, and it becomes very threatening. We, in our weak sinfulness, deal with the threats of the world around us sometimes in a wrong way. We decide that spur of the moment when confronted by those who don't see Christ as the only way to eternal life, that maybe it's best if we're just quiet. If we don't speak up, if we don't confess our faith, it's easier to be quiet and safe than speak up and get in trouble, so we let fear get the best of us. So today to us, Jesus says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. As children of Christ who have been redeemed and forgiven, as those for whom Christ shed his blood and died, We have nothing to fear in this world. There will be those, no doubt, who criticize the faith we confess, who take issue with our Savior. But we have nothing to fear from them. Because we have a life separate from this physical life. They can take everything we have. They can ruin our reputations. They can even kill us, which today is happening to plenty of Christians around the world because of the faith they confess. They can take our life, but they cannot take the eternal life that Christ places into us through our baptisms. The life of forgiveness, the life of being reconciled to God. That is ours now and forever because it is caught up in the safety of Christ, not in our flesh. Jesus says, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father in heaven. Jesus will claim us as his own in heaven. So we have nothing to fear in confessing him here on earth. The other kind of fear that Christ addresses today in our gospel lesson is that normal, everyday kind of fear that all human beings share. It's the worry that confronts us day by day about the little things, about the clothes, the money, conflict within our families, what's going to happen to our future. So many little things come up every day, and we lose sleep over them worrying. Worry is actually a form of fear. And to all those who worry about their daily little cares, Jesus says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. My friends, God knows everything about you. He knows you in such detail, he can tell you the number of hairs on your head. And he knows the obstacles that are in your way every day. He knows what you need to get through them, to persevere in your faith. And God loves you and cares for you enough that he promises you he will meet those needs as they arise. I mean, God feeds the birds in the middle of winter when there's nothing growing for them to eat. How much more will he care for those for whom his son has bled and died? 
So in the lesson today, in the face of all these daily little fears that come up, Jesus says to us, just, just trust me. Trust the fact that he is loving and compassionate. Trust that Christ is actively involved in taking care of every one of those little things that so trouble us. God has proven himself willing to go to extremes to take care of the biggest problems that are there in our life. He let his son be subject to hatred and disdain. He let him face death on a cross in our place so we could be reconciled to him and our sins done away with. So God has proven himself capable of handling the worst problems in our lives. Even in the sacrifice of his son, how much more is he not going to handle those everyday little things that come up? The only thing in this reading today that Jesus says we should actually fear is God. That's surprising in a way. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus did not come teaching an overall doctrine that we should be afraid of God. We shouldn't be. He tells us right after this, in fact, that not to fear because we're of more value than many sparrows. But here in this particular verse, he says there is a place for fear of God. And I think what Jesus is doing here is trying to expose how misdirected our normal daily fears can be. Because a lot of times we let our fears of other people or other situations that are troubling us get the better of us. When confronted with a situation where we might either confront someone and offend them or offend God, we would rather avoid offending another person and not worry about offending God. Jesus says it should be the other way around. When dealing with sin and temptation, we should be concerned about offending God. As ignoring God and giving in to our baser fears and desires, that's dangerous business. It's not just some little white sin that God doesn't care about. No, God has given us something more than this. We are Christ's. We have been washed and sanctified, given the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Jesus' life is our life. Christ's devotion to the Father is the devotion given to us. We bear His image in this world. And when we give in to our fears, let worry drive us, or hide our confession because we don't want to be too open with our faith, when we give in to our fears, we should remember we are offending God, which is far more serious than offending man. Jesus put God the Father first. Jesus loved the Father's will more than his own safety in life. And in putting the Father first, Jesus has made us into something different and unique from the rest of the world around us. We live to put God the Father first. Not self, not even other people, but God. When Jesus says, don't fear men, fear God, he means to tell us that now that we are redeemed, we can, in fact, put God first and face our fears. Now, there are those who fear God for all the wrong reasons. Maybe once in a while we catch ourselves in this, too. There are those who fear God because of the sins that they have committed. Because they know they haven't been true to God. They know their lives aren't, aren't what God wants them to be. And so they wonder if maybe they're so far gone, God can't possibly forgive them anymore. They fear God's wrath and their lives get all twisted and convoluted because of that fear. But this kind of fear is something else that need never enter our lives. Our gracious triune God, the God who speaks to us today from his word, is patient. Kind. 
Jesus came not to save the good people who never sin. He came to save sinners, people who have really messed things up, people like you and me. There is no fear for us in Christ. He faced it all. He faced all our fears. He stood before the terrible wrath of God in our place and took it in his flesh so we wouldn't have to. So now we need not fear the Father when we think of our sin. Now we have a Savior, my friends, who has opened up the arms of his eternal love and mercy to us so that fear need never be in our lives. Our triune God, our God is a God who does not hold our past against us or punish us for it. And not only does that mean he forgives us, but it also means he gives us his spirit to now go with us to make our lives different, to stamp us with faith and confidence in him, not yielding to the fears that torment the rest of the world around us. So my friends, today the one overriding message of God's word to us all is that God loves you. You have nothing to fear. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise and we continue with the Te Deum on page 223.
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. We pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh.